Anyway, um, what I would like to talk about is River Glen Gardens tonight, but I want you to think of is your gardens. A lot of people uh, just ignore their garden during the other seasons of the year. They think the growing season is the only time to enjoy it. So this is called River Glen Gardens through the seasons. And it will start in winter and go through spring and summer and fall and so on. But anyway, uh, Sauk River runs through the middle of my property up at Little Sauk. And it comes all the way down to St. Cloud. In the winter time, uh, this, these are some very early pictures of my land. Um, I planted 40,000 evergreens over it. So this is when the trees were very small. And uh, you can see in the snow time, in the winter time, where the carpet is snow, the river stays open. I have birds, trumpeters, swans, and birds that stay there all winter. Uh, my birds are tamed. Uh, they follow me everywhere, land in my head and uh, get eat out of my hands and so it's a wonderful uh, time of the year. Again we should enjoy our gardens in the winter time as well as the summer time and uh, to enjoy the snow on the trees and evergreens uh, it's a very special time really and a lot of times we turn our, ourselves off uh, in our gardens during the, during the winter time. This is my U-shaped Japanese style home and uh, you can see through the snow branches. When the uh, snow is on the trees, the Japanese call it snow blossom trees. It's blooming, they're blooming in the winter time with fresh snow on them. And uh, it's a, a, a pretty time to look at the heavy snowfall on the, on the trees at that time. A little tank bridge across the river there. A Japanese lantern with the snow on the top and the lanterns are made to catch snow to have that constant uh, fresh uh, snow on the uh, top of the lantern is a very beautiful thing heavy weeping willows branches with the heavy snow and this is something that will be seen very shortly in our own uh, backyard But all the trees, it's good to get out there with the fresh snow before they get blown off and to enjoy uh, the snow on the, uh, on the trees. This lantern is nine feet tall. I made all of my stone lanterns and um, each one represents something that's a wave on the edge of the river and um, Again, wonderful winter scenes. Big weeping willow that I planted as a branch. That's a good swimming hole, by the way. Again, we will be seeing this very shortly, so I'm kind of flying through here. <laughs> this is inside of the U of my house. I look out of the windows all the different directions with a big lantern and uh, uh, some of the dwarfed trees. Again, uh, winter does things like making these little hanging uh, icicle bells underneath the weeping willow. And these are things that you have to get out and see when they happen because they don't last very long sometimes. Beautiful crystal chandeliers underneath the branch here. You can see the river going up and down the level there and making these individual crystal uh, droppings. A crystal chandelier on one of the branches. Again, uh, different snow shots. And we'll be coming up with spring here very shortly. Ooh, that's a dark shot there. Again, uh, different things that you can see that happen. Um, this is probably an owl who's gotten a rabbit in the garden. And you can see the rabbit track ending into nothing and the wing, wing beats of the owl uh, 
when, when it was after the particular rabbit. These are things you have to look for in order to see. But they look like little snow angels when you, when you look at it, but it's actually the beating of the, uh, of the wings of the owl. Here's one of my basset hounds. And um, I'm on my fifth one now. Each one lasted 12 or 13 years. And I've got a two-year now that thinks he's a puppy yet. And, and he's friends with everything. Some of the squirrels on the doorstep. And feeding the birds by hand. This is Dave when he was a little monster. Uh, uh, probably a young teenager there at that time. And that is Mama Nutty. She ate out of my hands for 35 years uh, as a tame bird. I could call her anywhere in the woods. And you can see her landing in, the, in his hand there. Aha, here's the coming of spring when the river starts breaking up. And it goes three different ways. It can go out uh, as honeycomb, and it sounds like silver bells down the whole river at that time. It can go out as big chunks that hit the sides of the bank and it's kind of awesome, or it can just dissolve out on the lake. And uh, so it can go three different ways on it. This is when it was going in chunks and honeycombing at the same time. It's quite dramatic to be there at that time uh, to hear that and see that happen. See, I have the whole end of the lake there and the lake comes, uh, ice comes down the river. This is the honeycombed ice, of course, from the, uh, from the ice flow. A great blue heron early in the morning and uh, early in the season. They usually come back on the 15th of March. This is out of my kitchen window. Flocks of ducks that stay there all winter long, and uh, I feed them sometimes, but mostly they kind of take care of themselves. The flood stage of the uh, river. This is out of my uh, living room windows. This is a jungle right now. I brought in all my big uh, potted plants. Dave helped me uh, a day or so ago. But you wouldn't be able to see out of my windows right now because I've got plants right up to the ceiling. Um, sometimes in a snowstorm, I sleep underneath a palm tree out there. So I have my own bit of Florida there. But you can see the uh, big uh, potted uh, plants. But it's much more so now on it. This is out of my living room window again during the winter time. Did you make this lamp Yes, I make those. Yeah, yeah. They're made out of, I make my own molds out of styrofoam and pour the, uh, mix the black sand from Lake Superior and so they weather into a rock texture like that. And you hope for moss and lichens to grow on them, which we are doing. I see that my roof has still got the uh, pebbles on the roof there at that time, but I have a shingle roof now on it. Some of the plants that might be in the house are the Gloriosa lele, uh, which is a real exotic looking flower and it's native of Africa. I also have a lot of Catalea orchids, and they're in my greenhouse right now, but they'll go in a light room in the basement very shortly. I've got 15 or 20 plants of these, and as they bloom, I bring them upstairs. So I have a bit of tropics here also in the wintertime. Again, spring coming slowly. You can see the peninsula slowly greening up. My place is a meeting place of two glaciers. So I both have the gray drift and the red drift. I have Lake Superior agates and I have petrified wood from the Dakotas and Lake Superior agates from the... And all the glacial features are there. The first spring flowers are the skunk cabbage. And uh, I brought... Uh, Th uh, 13 plants, 9 plants originally. And now I have the western, the Japanese, and the eastern. But it's an unusual flower because it gives heat off in the springtime. 
and it melts the snow around it. And little insects come and, and use it for a, a warming house. They go into the flower and it's warm. You can put your finger into the flower and it feels like a, it's warm inside of it. And uh, some of the baby owls in the springtime with all the fluff on them. I have the nest there every year. But again, the melting of the snow and the coming of springtime. Some of my lawns. The past flower is one of the first of the uh, early spring flowers. And sometimes we call them a crocus, which they are not. And the blood roots start coming in the, in the woods. And the hepatica. Hepatica is called liver leaf, and it has the uh, symbol of the leaves at that time. Because it looked like a liver, they uh, made medicine out of it. And cells hepatica is still a, a carryover from that. Uh, hundreds of pounds of dried roots used to be sent to Europe and made into medicine just because it looked like a liver. Here we got some of our friends which I sure have a time with now. Uh, quite a few deer. At that time it was rare to see a deer out to my place. Now I have herds of them. Everything I plant, evergreens and so on, I have to uh, put wire around them in order to protect them from the deer. Crocus bulbs early in the springtime the earliest of your spring flowers. Again, gardens at that time with the last of the uh, snow. This is when I was doing the hillside garden on the opposite side of my house. Looks a lot different now. There's a plank bridge across the river there. That tree is gone now, but you can see my house. That boulder there came as a gift from one of my uh, early uh, scouts that, that used to be out there. He uh, lives down in Wisconsin and uh, he called from down there and he said, I'm sending you up a little Christmas gift, Ron. And up came a truck with that huge boulder on it. <laughs> so I think I had the heaviest Christmas gift of anybody that year. Lawns in the house. A lot of this has changed uh, since that time. Rock steps going up there. I used to flip flat stop rocks across whole pastures to get them there. Early warblers and early birds uh, coming to the uh, trees in the early springtime. This from the river looking up at my house is covered with 120 year old boards that I took off of a Surrey shed. And that's the rock tunnel that I take uh, all the bigger plants in. Dave has been coming out and helped me carry about 25 or 30 tubs of water lilies that go in the back room of my basement. And they'll be coming out of the fish pond very shortly now. Again, you'll see the changing of the, of the place. These are some of the antique buildings. This is the Museum of the Land. It has a diorama of an Indian village in it that I made, which is between my flower bed was an Indian village at one time. And then I made the little characters and showing what it looked like. With the uh, bark uh, lodges. 9,000 years old. And that's Dave back there with a the buffalo skull. And I've assembled one in my museum now. They're from my river. You wade up to your chest in water and feel with your bare feet in the marl, and then you come up with these ancient, ancient buffalo bones, which are older than the buffalo that we have of today. Serbian spruce, which is, uh, I've, outlived it, I've outlived it now. But again, the gardens at different times in the springtime. Always a beautiful view out of all the windows. Creeping flocks and a fish pond there. 
variegated uh, sweet flag. Some of the early daffodils. This is the uh, uh, poet's uh, daffodil, a tiny cup. It's the original wild daffodil before they hybrided it into the big daffodil of today. These are small cups in some of them. Great hyacinths, this is a double form. And a pink flowered uh, a wild plum that I happened to find in one of the apple trees beginning to bloom. This is a rock wall behind my house. Every time I came home from work, I put 20 rocks in the back of the van. And before I ate my supper, I would carry those 20 up and put them in place. and tried to make it look natural. And uh, one time a tour came out there and a lady said, it's a nice wall, but it's too bad it isn't straight. She wanted a straight wall. <laughs> Beginning of the lilacs, I have 125 different kinds of lilacs out there. And you'll be seeing some of them. This is a Chinese lilac, very fragrant. And these are some of the French lilacs here. Pinks and uh, purples, uh, yellows. This is President Gravy, which is the bluest of all the lilacs. And you can see just some of the 125 Sensation with a white edge on the leaves. A pink variety of double varieties. Darker forms. Yellow forms. Primrose is a yellow one. It's a very rare one. It's a Chinese I like again. This is my pebble garden in the back which is made up of North Shore pebbles, uh, tumble pebbles. This is part of my rock garden, and you can see some of the creeping flocks and so on. And that has changed quite drastically also now. Hens and chickens, the superiums. Orange job. You had sung down there, which is quite unusual. This is a, a columbine, a species columbine. And a dark uh, form, which is also a species uh, columbine. One of my agaves here, I have several agaves, which we just hauled in the house the other day. And you get some for gifts here right now. And, uh, some of the hosta in the hosta section. I have around 250 kinds of hosta. Lamian, look out for lamian. It can take over your garden. That's the uh, black uh, locust blooming in the distance, which is a big tree now. Black locust can't be gotten in Minnesota anymore. It's illegal to sell it here. Very, very fragrant when it blooms. This one doesn't run underground very much, so I'm very happy with it. I have several versions of it. Again, the garden uh, getting towards uh, late spring. These are uh, dwarf iris in the dwarf iris section. A number of different kinds here on it. That too has changed uh, quite drastically since that time. We used to have a lady in Minneapolis, Sula Hansen was her name, and she created a lot of these. She loved the iris so much she had one tattooed on the inside of her arm. These little dwarf forms are quite unique. Overall are some of the gardens here. and some of the dwarf varieties. For the tours, I always made an uh, oriental or Japanese arrangement in the corner of my living room. And uh, you can see how they would make a loose arrangement versus a bunch of flowers stuffed in a vase 
that you see on, on the Today Show every morning on the table. And that's the sliding door that I painted a, a, a Japanese pine tree on it. My television and uh, stereo were behind those. This is a lantern that uh, sits in the river, or on the edge of the river. And this is when some of the uh, flowering crabs start blooming in the springtime. And I have probably 30 or more varieties of flowering crabs out there. And um, it becomes a beautiful time to visit when they reflect in the water. A lot of these trees are much larger than what you'll be seeing on the slides there. I remember as a paper boy seeing the first pink flowering crab in Long Prairie and I couldn't believe it. Uh, this is a Kelsey, a double form. But you can see how beautiful they are. This is red jade, which is a weeping form. And beautiful fruit on it also. This is across the river looking up at the house. And the swimming hole again. But you can see what a change. We were just looking at winter there a little bit ago. This is probably the most beautiful flowering crab in the world and called Brandywine. And it has double pink flowers and is very, very fragrant. But it has the ugliest fruit in the world also. <laughs> a little green uh, wrinkled apples. But look at the flowers, aren't they? Uh, they're just absolutely gorgeous. Iceland poppies which kind of takes the place of some of the iris uh, during the summertime. The Flanders poppy. In Flanders fields, the poppies blow between the crosses, row on row. This is a wild poppy that's in all the grain fields out in, in uh, Europe. And so uh, it has a black cross on the bottom of it also. So we're progressing through the seasons. Some of the peonies blooming, the single forms. I like the single forms really well. And they like to stand up in the rain also on it. This is one of my seedlings. I let the seedlings grow because you have a variety. So if you see a tiny peony plant in your, in your garden, three or four years from now, it will look like some of these uh, single forms here. This is a brilliant red that I like very much. So. Now they're crossing them. This is how I use the peonies and some of the arrangements. It's about uh, five foot high with the grass on the top there on it. And of course I have visitors. Um, they come to the door. I haven't had raccoons now for the last year or two. But this is Bonnie and her kids. She, she came to the door for 13 years for her powdered sugar donuts. And uh, so, but she lived 13 years and I raised two raccoons from babies and I had a great time with them also on it. A Japanese arrangement again on the table of uh, Iris to the chorus. This is a giant verbascum, which is a, a giant form. It gets about nine feet tall. It comes from Turkey. Some of the hardy cacti in the cactus section. And this is where Dave really shines. Uh, he's a cactus specialist, so if you've got any cactus uh, questions, ask him. This is the hardy cactus section. And I have about maybe 25 or 30 or more varieties of hardy cactus here in Minnesota. Minnesota actually has four hardy cactuses native to Minnesota. These are some of the prickly pears. This is my back door uh, with a, one of the orchid cactuses blooming. And uh, I've had this since I was 13 or 14 years old. And I just took it down to the basement the other day in a cool room. And it will be down there all winter in the dark now and come out and bloom like this in the springtime. In fact, it's got a couple blossoms on it in the dark right now down there. But a florist gave me this as a cutting when I was 13 years old. And that's a long time ago. 
from the California poppies. I think I have most of the state flowers out there uh, of all the different states. This is a Jacobean lily, and I just dug those bulbs today. They come from Mexico. It's the wild armorillus of Mexico. And I dug about 100 bulbs of those today. That's a rare find in your garden. Go out and look for the tiny things in order to enjoy your garden. This is called a potter's wasp. And I've only seen this once before when I was a kid. I took this branch off after it was empty, but it's a little tiny clay jug, only about a half inch across. And a wasp makes that out of mud, puts some sun spiders in there, lays an egg on it, and another wasp comes out of it. But it's called a potter's wasp, and it's in a Japanese hemlock right in my garden there. Or not hemlock, a, a Japanese larch. Very rare find when you have that. Another one of the arrangements in the living room. Whoops, we got our friends here again. Lilies uh, in the lily section, which I don't have anymore because a deer completely decimated my lilies. And so I, I don't grow many lilies. I grow the Martagon lilies in a special spot, but these were all different versions of lilies at that time. Aryan hybrids. Different form. It makes me sick to see these now because I don't have them anymore. But they've done wonders. What's happened with the lily, they found out that they could take the pollen of the tiger lily and carry it into the oriental lily. So we have oriental lilies now that are hardy because they have uh, blood of the tiger lily in them. And you can see blood of the tiger lily in some of these. This is sterling silver, I remember the name of that one. That was called Paul Bunyan. It's a shame I don't have those anymore. Delphiniums and lilies go together, as you know. And of course, delphiniums are poisonous, so the deer kind of leave those alone. Those are some of the uh, Pacific hybrids. That one white one snuck in there in the uh, King Arthur series. It was supposed to be all the dark versions, and, and out comes this white one. That's uh, Queen of the Meadow there, too, which is uh, herbaceous spirea. My back doorstep, which is now a deck, and that's the jasmine and the oleanders. I have the oleanders out because they're frost-free, and the clematis on the side of the house there on it. Well, something that you should do with your clematis right now is dig a trench beside the plant. They break very easily, but dig a trench six inches deep along the side of your house and lay your vine in there and cover it with dirt. And then let it there. And next spring sprouts will come up the full length of the trench and cover your house like this. And so that's a good way of multiplying your, your clematis. It will root the full length of the clematis in the trench. Armorellus, this is the original species from Africa. This is a hybrid of the uh, Jacobian lily, which is uh, wild in, in Mexico. The two of them were put together and have come up with some of our hybrids now. Uh, after being separated when the continents were pulled apart, this one was left in, Mex in Mexico and the other one moved to Africa. And so now they've crossed them together after millions of years and come up with different hybrids that we have of today. I just dug all of these today. I dug a hundred armorillus bulbs today, which I plant in my flower beds instead of blooming in the house. This rose comes from Alaska and it's on Alaska time. It blooms two weeks earlier than our wild roses. 
uh, an arrangement of Wild Roses and uh, a viburnum there in the back. There's a lot of bamboo in my house. Some of the antique roses, the moss rose, with moss on the back of the bud and on the stem, crested moss. Now, if you come there, don't expect all these things to be blooming at one time. <laughs> um, you have to realize that this is a succession of things. I just dug all my calla lilies today also. This arrangement with calla lilies and uh, bamboo. Again, all these uh, Japanese arrangements. In a Japanese arrangement, you have earth, man, and heaven. And you have the three different segments there. On the bowl, you have earth, and in the middle, you have man, and then you have the high sprigs there as heaven. I received a chorus and Queen Anne's lace on the bottom of it. Tell the arrangement in the corner. Notice the leaves and the flowers. Use very few flowers, mainly the uh, airiness of the arrangement. That's Iris through the chorus again, which is the uh, flower of, of France. The fleur de lis on the French flag is this flower. And what's unusual about it is the symbol of a, of a rout rather than a victory. The uh, French army was cornered in a bend in the river and they were going to be killed off. And at the last minute, the commander saw this iris growing in the shallows of the water and knew they could run his army across it, and he did. So their flag is a symbol of a rout rather than a victory. Some of the tropical water lilies in the pond. And this one I brought from uh, the bayous of Louisiana, it's my favorite lily really now. Bleeding heart arrangement with white bleeding heart. A gladiola arrangement with burrs, water burrs. This is a, um, a glor uh, echinacea uh, daisy and then uh, uh, branch arrangements there. Peonies and a, and a pine branch. This is this tort, one of the perennials in the bed, in an iris bed. Iris means rainbow. And I watched a Japanese lady one time studying a bud in a florist shop in Japan. She kept looking and looking and looking at a bud like this and uh, selected it then to be opened in a bud vase in her home. Iris with dew on it. Get out and look at your garden in the morning because you have jewels on all your flowers. And it's so beautiful to see that. Iris and Japanese lanterns. First of the morning light, lighting up just one part of the flower bed. Again, backlighting on the Siberian iris. One time we had a, uh, a open house out there and some of the, uh, the scouts' girlfriends dressed as Japanese uh, girls with the parasols and some of the Japanese gowns that I have. A double Japanese iris. I don't like the double forms of iris very much. This is a rare form of a, uh, of a, uh, uh, a thistle-like plant that I only had it bloom once in the garden. Right flat on the ground. These are Peruvian daffodils, and I'll be digging those tomorrow. Probably 200 of these bulbs. This is called sulfur queen. You have to keep the bulbs warm over winter or they won't bloom, so you have to keep them in the room temperature instead of in the root cellar. Arrangement of the same flower. Japanese uh, maples, don't ever buy one of these in the stores. Occasionally Walmart will be selling these 
if they're not hardening our area. These all go into a cold root cellar, and I've had some, some in pots since the 1950s out of my place. They go into cold root cellar for the winter time. The uh, angel's trumpet or datura. This is the middle rule, the pink form. This is uh, pictures from an airplane looking down on my place. And you can see my house down there and the bend of the river and some of the gardens here. Notice all the evergreens there uh, everywhere. Also the tiny Japanese lantern that's nine feet tall down there. This is all my land. I have 75 acres of land. I bought it the year after I graduated from high school. I paid $2,000 for 72 acres at that time. And I wanted a place that I could grow everything on it. And I can grow everything from cactus to water lilies there. It's a very unique piece of property. Back on land again. This uh, pine, unfortunately, I worked on for 60 years and it died of a scotch pine disease a couple years ago. Every year I'm up there with the scissors cutting all the candles, crookeding the branches, and uh, making these trees oriental looking. One of my bassets looking at one of the tame chipmunks. I saw him sleeping with a chipmunk on top of his head one time. Again, look for the tiny things in your garden. A cicada may come out, last for two days, and then dies. But what a beautiful little creature to see hanging on a stub in your garden. Or a snapping turtle coming up to lay eggs. Sometimes I have three or four of them in the gardens laying eggs at one time. And you have to look out for them during that time. But it's all part of nature. He's probably been doing this for 75 or 100 years. Or she has. I shouldn't say he <laughs> Sometimes things get a little ugly when the tent caterpillars or uh, army caterpillars come. But again, things can be beautiful with catbird nests. Or wild turkeys at the bird counter on the pebble garden. Some of the early spring flowers again, the dog tooth violet. There are several versions of this now. The white lady slipper, which is a fairy lady slipper instead of our state flower. And the stemless lady slipper, which demands acid soil. This is in an acid bog at my place. Yellow lady slipper, there's a couple versions of it. and our state flower. I talk about tragedies once in a while on the talk here. There was a group of 100 to 150 plants uh, on 71 between my place and Sock Center. And they sprayed them this, this, this year. And they're all dead. All 100 or 75 plants are in the ditch on 71. And they're all black now. But I have... Um, Several hundred plants on my plant, on my plant. Some of them will be a darker color and some will be lighter. And again, there are Indian legends with all these plants also, and I could go on and on with legends here. But again, get out when there's dew, spider traps in your evergreens. And sometimes in the springtime, the pelicans come for the, for the fish run. And I'll have two or three hundred pelicans there at one time. And they swallow fish and they can't fly. And they have to stay there overnight to digest the fish that they've got in their belly. You can see how they corner the fish in the rapids there. Different times of the day and different times of the seasons here. This was a very rare time, and I have several, two or three slides of this. This is when Yellowstone was burning. 
And the skies, you, I don't know if you remember, the skies were brown that time. Instead of gray, they were brown. And all these three pictures look like antique oil paintings because of that. And it was just a rare time to see the unusual form. This is a tree that I worked on for 60 years and now, and now it's gone. This is, is that Yellowstone burning again where the sky was brown. It was very, very unique during those days. This is uh, one of the trees that I was going to uh, uh, work at Japanese Farm. This is before I got at it. This is while I'm at it. And this is what it looked like when I was done with it. Looks like the grasshoppers got at it or something. Is that way I could get pads to grow on it and, and make it into an oriental tree. A little tiny sprig of, of uh, grass and you can see the moss growing on the ground. I put wood ashes down to grow moss on, around in the Japanese garden. And you can see the nugal pines there and some of the uh, Japanese ones. We're back at uh, the crab time here with the uh, flowering crabs. We're uh, looking at some of the different crabs again uh, at crab season there on it. We're back to the iris and things here. Our goldenrod. Uh, goldenrod wasn't native to Europe, and uh, they took it and hybrided it into the goldenrod of some of the garden version. And those are red sumac berries there, along with it, which makes quite an unusual arrangement there. These are the skunk cabbage in the summertime, and the lichens on the lantern top. Um, that's what I try for. Wherever I go, I scrape lichens off of tombstones. Uh, they don't like them on tombstones, you know, and I bring them as powder back. I brought lichen powder back from all over the world, sprinkle it on my lantern tops, and it takes uh, about three years to get one the size of a pinhead, and then they grow from there. So I don't let people walk on my, on my stones because of that. You can see the beautiful golden lichen on one of the lantern tops here. Some of the flocks and the fall uh, start coming with the different grasses. I have a hundred different kinds of grasses in my grass section. Pompous grass. Many different forms of it there. Weeping willow turning golden. Fall coming on here. The uh, buckeyes. We call them chestnuts, but we shouldn't do that. The colors in the flower beds there. Japanese maple, or uh, uh, Siberian maples, and sugar maples. We just went through that recently. The larches turn these beautiful golden colors. We call them tamaracks, but they're really called a large. Apples on the um, apple trees. Crab apples. Deciduous holly. And it starts looking like fall when the trees start eating their stepping stones up to the house. I carry my groceries up these all the time. This is a little uh, waterfall that I've made out of limestone rock. Again, fall. That big oak is gone now. It was 160 years old. But the Janola maples start coloring and turn into these wonderful red colors during the fall. These are Japanese maples that I carry into the root cellar and uh, they're in big pots. 
the inside of my U of the house with the Japanese maples around it. But again, don't buy these because they're not going to be hardy for you. This one is beautiful when it turns red like this. I have probably 18 or 19 different kinds of these. One of them been in, two of them have been in, been in pots since the 1950s. Those are, this is a Janola maple now, which you can grow, they're hardy, and you've got them here all over, I think. But they look a lot like Japanese maples on it. But. wedding at the garden and a number of people have been married there in fact too many and uh, as a result I've uh, had to stop because I was having a wedding there every every weekend and uh, organs and pianos and all kinds of stuff were coming up there one of my scouts got married there well a couple of them did and uh, it rained all morning early afternoon they carried up planks for pews, uh, and uh, it stopped raining at four o'clock in the afternoon, and they were on the upper garden there. People sat down below, and so help me at the very end of the ceremony, it stopped for raining for two or three hours. A rainbow formed all the way across the whole wedding party, and it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah. They're still married. <laughs> Another wedding party on the top of the garden there. There's, a, there's how it looks when they used to have the weddings there. I used to get, one time I got billed for an organ that was brought up there from Alexandria for a whole summer and I finally went and, pay, and told them that I didn't bring the organ up there. <laughs> Again, more of the full shots when you get into the globe there, uh, Janola maple. And that's happening kind of right now. Sheared mugle pines there. I have to wire across all of those where the deer eats them down to the ground. That's that special tree. Again, fall coming on. Beautiful time. A late, late sunset on the on the tree. But again, get out and enjoy your garden in the spring uh, and the summer and the fall. And at all times, by moonlight, by uh, twilight, there's always a special time in your garden to, to catch it at that time. Sunsets. And this is called Will of the Wisp. I know you've heard that, that quoted as if somebody doesn't settle down, he has will of the wisp. <laughs> Have you heard of that uh, saying? When a baby spider uh, spins a web and blows with the web, certain times in your garden, the trees will be covered with these tiny spider webs. If he doesn't like it there, he spins another web and flies a little bit further. That's will of the wisp. And if you see that in your garden, that's what you have, and it's a rare day. You should enjoy it during that day when it, your trees have those little spider webs on them. You can see how they're, they're covering the branches and twigs uh, during a day like that. Again, the first frost, which we had this morning, when everything is white with the frost, And the ice storms are beautiful to see. Terrible on our trees and bushes and things. This is a once in a lifetime thing when you see a frost flower like this. A hollow stem 
with the ground unfrozen under it will be like a spitz cookie. And it frost moisture comes up to the stem at night, slowly squeezes out like a spitz cookie uh, maker and makes these delicate, delicate frost flowers on the ground. And if you see one of these in your lifetime, you're lucky. And this is a time, it, they only last two or three hours. The minute the sun comes out, they're gone. And so uh, it's a very rare occasion to find one of these. Birds in the winter time on the counter, and I have many, many of them there. Sunsets in the evenings, icicles on the Japanese lanterns. Um, that's the oak arrangement branch on my back door. I make arrangements every year for Christmas there. My Victorian room in the basement has all antique ornaments on it. I haven't done one down there recently, but there's a Victorian room in the basement. The minute you go down the steps, it's all old woodwork from old mansions and old antiques. Those hanging lamps, I have 35 of those now in my collection. I have two or 300 kerosene lamps all together. You can see the Victorian room in the Christmas time. That door goes out a tunnel and that's where you have to bring things into the basement from. from. The ornaments, the antique ornaments on the Christmas tree there. The other end of the room there, the stairway going up to the kitchen. The stair rail with the uh, bowls on it. I like that room down there. It's very cool during the summertime. I go down there and sleep during the summertime. Right? Cranberry hobnail all right over there on it. And that's my uh, uh, vases for doing Japanese arrangements. Oh no, these are all my antique uh, shelves. That, those are antique dishes there. I, I, I thought for a second it was the other. Uh, this is my uh, arrangement basis in the basement for doing a Japanese arrangement. And we're back to winter again. When everything is quiet, snow on the grass section, and snow on the plants and trees. Sunsets with icicles, ice on them. And that's the end of my program there, so. <laughs>